A patient was stabbed in the upper part of the side of the neck. Physical examination reveals that the patient has lost sensation from the skin over the angle of the mandible. Which of the following nerves is most likely injured? As for the first choice, cervical branch of the facial, we need to recall the branches of the facial nerve in the face. Five branches or groups of branches emerge from the anterior border of the parotid gland. The branches are temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular, and cervical. All these branches are motor to the muscles of facial expression. The first four branches are confined to the face, but the cervical branch which we are concerned with descends into the neck to supply platysma muscle, a muscle of facial expression. This nerve is thus motor and not sensory. Regarding the other choices, it's a good time to recall the cervical plexus. This plexus is formed by the anterior primary rami of the upper four cervical nerves. It is covered by the upper part of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the plexus has cutaneous and muscular branches. The cutaneous branches from the cervical plexus emerge around the middle of the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle. The cutaneous innervation in the neck is as such a strip of skin over the extensor muscles of the neck and extending over the back of the skull is supplied segmentally by posterior primary rami of cervical nerves. Posterior primary rami. Some of them are named such as the great occipital and third occipital nerves. And these are the posterior primary rami of C2 and C3 respectively. So the great occipital nerve, option D, is a posterior primary ramus and it supplies the back of the scalp. The rest of the skin of the neck is supplied by anterior primary rami of C2, 3 and 4 from the cervical plexus. C1 has no cutaneous branches and from C5 downwards the dermatomes concerned are projected to the upper limb and constitute the brachial plexus. Four cutaneous branches from the cervical plexus pierce the deep fascia, the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia, about halfway down the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle. These four branches, they radiate like spokes of a wheel. This region is also known as the nerve point of the neck. The lesser occipital, option E, is derived from C2 and runs up along the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid to supply the skin over its upper part, behind the auricle. Again, remember that the great occipital nerve supplies the skin on the posterior aspect of the scalp and is derived from posterior primary ramus of C2, while the lesser occipital is derived from the anterior primary ramus of C2 and is a branch of the cervical plexus. So the lesser occipital is a wrong choice. The great auricular nerve is derived from C2 and 3. It passes vertically upwards over the sternocleidomastoid and is distributed to an area of skin over the angle of the mandible, as well as it supplies the auricle below the external acoustic meatus. It is thus the only cutaneous branch on the face that is not derived from the trigeminal nerve. So the great auricular is the nerve that supplies the skin over the angle of the mandible and it is the most likely injured. Regarding the transverse cervical, this is also derived from C2 and 3, but it passes transversely from behind the posterior border of sternomastoid to supply the skin over the anterior triangle of the neck, from the chin to the sternum and is not related to the skin over the mandible. Although not mentioned as a choice, but to complete the topic on the cutaneous innervation of the neck, the fourth cutaneous branch or branches from the cervical plexus are the supraclavicular nerves. These are derived from C3 and 4. They arise as a single trunk, which divides into medial, intermediate and lateral cutaneous branches. They supply the skin not only of the neck, but the anterior part of the chest as far down as the sternal angle because the 
below the level of the sternal angle the dermatome is the dermatome of T2 and from C4 to T2 the dermatomes are borrowed to the upper limb on the lateral side it supplies the skin over the shoulder and the upper part of the deltoid muscle and backwards it supplies the skin down to the level of the spine of the scapula you should remember the root value of the supraclavicular nerves they are C3 and 4 and these are the same root values of the phrenic nerve this will help you remember the origin of referred pain in the tip of the shoulder when structures supplied by the phrenic nerve are irritated.